Hey guys, uh, good morning. So I did a review two months after buying Rasa. So I'm planning to do one more review, like I guess probably six to eight months after buying. There are quite a number of people that bought Rasa, like either Rasa 11 or Rasa 8. So I thought maybe I should put some, put another video with some more content uh, that will help everyone and catch up with others in terms of uh, you know learnings and experiences so i just put a cloth to make sure it's not going to collect dust all right so this is how typically i store rasa when it is inside uh, usually i don't put any cover i just close it with one of these our dust covers let's talk about the dew shield, I'm going to take this out for a second. This dew shield is called Astro Zap dew shield. I would strongly recommend buying this one because it comes with a dew heater. So I connected the other end of this wire. If I have a way to show you guys. So this is the this is the Pegasus Astro power box. So when I put my dew shield, this goes into one of these so that it kind of stays. I put like zip ties for this to get hold here. I put it in the bottom of it so that you know even if it has dew or something, it doesn't fall directly on this one. And this is the power adapter. I don't want that to like moving around for the balance issues. So I actually put it out here and connected the uh, power, the Pegasus Astro power box. So to counter that balance, I put like, I guess uh, one of these uh, dovetails as a counterbalance. I found that is the easiest way to get it I know like there is another balance available, but uh, I found this as like a stopgap because it actually per worked perfectly. One of the things that you have to do is make sure you put the dew shield and then do balancing the mount. Because uh, if you are, even though the 11 is on CGX mount with three counterweights, it's barely making it. Okay. So I would maybe put it on a CGXL mount or a bigger mount. CGX mount is uh, not very happy by putting this much of a weight. So I have to remove actually the orange dovetail on the top and whatever the guide scope I had there and I need to uh, stay with the 50 mm guide scope. Otherwise it would have been very difficult with so much weight going on. But uh, one day I will move this on CGXL back and I will try CGXL if it works without and then I will try with the orange dovetail. I still need to figure that part out. But this is, uh, even though it's not happy, I was able to take good pictures. So it just barely makes it. Okay. But if I have to put a dovetail and a guide scope, I have to go with the fourth weight and that's when it is becoming really difficult. So talking about the balance, you have to be very careful with Rasa for the balance because chances are you are taking very short exposures like 30 seconds or 60 seconds, whatever. And you may not, you don't need to guide for that one. So if you wanted like unguided exposures, even more than one minute, you, you would get a good round stars if your mount is balanced and polar aligned. Okay. So of course you balance both on the RA side and the deck side, it's kind of very difficult like to judge the balance. So don't cheat yourself when you are uh, balancing. Uh, right now, I balanced it with the dew shield here. But if I put a dew shield, the balance is perfect. Uh, same here. Yeah, make sure this balance is good both on the RA side and the deck side. Like I put a tape here so that you know where to place telescope on the mount, you can use this like as a measurement. There is one more question that someone was asking about how did I mount the guide scope? So there are two holes here. 
I hope I am able to show you guys and I put a you know the base and then basically that's how it works I mean these are the parts I assume you know the celestron parts that you need to put a Orion guide scope there and also I removed these two screws I love this red dot finder so I always put it here I don't do the two star and six star alignment anymore I just do when I take my scope outside I'll just place the scope in the same place every time so I know it is already uh, looking at the Polaris and then I just do a quick align and then I immediately go directly to the stars. I used to do the two star and six star alignment with this one but right now this is there if I have to move the place to a different place and if I have to look at the Polaris that's the only reason why I have it here. Otherwise I really don't need a red dot finder but that's what it is. Okay. Let's talk about the front side of the telescope, which is actually the, uh, which is one of the complex things that we have. So cables, you need to run them like a circle. Okay. So don't do the cables like this. I mean, it's okay to do it, but you get the diffraction spikes, particularly with Rasa. And if it's the star is very big, the diffraction spike is so big and actually it covers half of your picture. So you need to be, I mean, people think by leaving the cables like this is okay, but if they go to a bigger star and when they see like half of the picture is covered by the spikes, it doesn't look really good. So this won't remove the diffraction spikes, but at least it will give you a somewhat less diffraction spikes. Okay. So you run them like, a, like an arc, like a cables, like, you know, twist them when you're sending it. As long as you are running them like as an arc, which is what I was told and you get this 3D printed cable and I attached it. I mean, you can see uh, how I did this one. Now, when it comes to the cameras and the usage of the cameras, there are two ways you can do it. Okay. Number one, if I use the color camera, so if I use the color camera, I'm putting the star Arizona a filter slider and then they gave me an adapter that works and then the camera directly the ZW071 hooks directly to the filter slider and I achieve the perfect back focus okay all right so when I use the monochrome camera here is my setup so I use the EFW ZWO filter wheel like mini filter wheel I have the barter fast filters inside three of them the f2 filters are really good if you are using monochrome and then i put these uh, paper stabs so that it doesn't show you know the sharp corners here right and these two adapters came from star arizona that works for the back focus this is for the adapter for the rasa the 1600 goes the zw 1600 goes directly on top of this one so this is my setup if I have to use monochrome, see, this is already ready to go always. All right. So one of them that you will realize is it collects a lot of dust. Okay. So the way I would do is Altura. Like this is one of the things available for photographic equipment on Amazon. They give you a bunch of stuff, the dust thing, and then some microfiber cloth. The thing I really like is this one. This solution is like really good. Once you blow the dust off completely from this one, okay, you can actually spray this solution on the lens itself a little bit, okay, and then so this is what I'm using. I'm just sharing my view of this one. I'm not recommending. Uh, this product um, okay that's pretty much it the reason why I like this one is it actually evaporates pretty quick it's not going to stay too long yeah you have to spend a little time and just clean it uh, let's talk about focusing okay 
So you can use this kind of a bathroom mask that has a little hole in the middle and it does work fairly well. I usually put this and put a tape to make sure that it stays intact. So if you are using sharp cap and if you magnify it to 200%, 300% or so the, and pick a star that is not like too bright, like a little faint and then basically make the star show the big donut, like completely defocus it and focus it all the way where you don't see any black dot in the middle when you are 300% zoomed in. You get a, actually a perfect focus with that one. You really don't need to do anything else. So that's another way to focus it. That's the second option. The third option that I have. So the third option I have is I'm using Star Arizona Micro Touch Focuser. So Rasa 11 comes with a feather touch focuser. It has the coarse focuser and a fine focuser. It's really good. The manual focus is really good. And once you lock these, the focus stays pretty intact. But if you are like inside the home and if you wanted to refocus it, uh, then you won't be able to. So I'll keep this like a little loose. And then I'm using the Star Arizona micro touch focuser here. There is a cable that goes from here to the box that I put it in the middle. And uh, you connect that box to your uh, USB hub, right? And that's pretty much how you operate. Uh, it does give you the V curve uh, with the Star Arizona uh, focuser. Even though it is corrected very well for RASAs, the mirror does wobble a little bit. So if you don't pay attention to the corners of the stars on the middle, you might actually have a very good focus on the side and actually less focus in the middle. But when you see the overall FWHM, the full width half maximum, you'll actually see it is pretty low. But really the middle stars are a little bit defocused compared to the corners or vice versa. So you have to pay attention. It's not much, it's tiny like the moment. Uh, they did correct it compared to the SETs, but you have to pay attention to that one, uh, particularly on the 11s because the mirror is very heavy. Uh, the, even though the movement is like very small where it is, the way I avoid generally is I defocus it completely and I bring it back. That way it is coming back straight rather than like just making a small adjustment. I usually make bigger adjustment so that I know I defocused it and then I came back so I get a perfect focus. I never just do like a plus 10 or minus 10 steps because I know I'm not going to get it. So I usually go all the way out and then come back all the way in and when I'm coming back in, I'm very careful to make sure I don't go, I don't overdo it. Okay, even when I'm using the stars on the focuser, I do it that way. How many times do I depend on the weaker like probably like one out of three times it gives me good focus so at least i have to do like two or three times weaker and i know like even though it fails one or one or two times eventually i'll get a pretty good focus and then sometimes i'll come out and i usually lock these check the focus if it is ruined uh, you may have to do it again that will be the the most difficult one when it actually changes the focus when, when you when you try to tighten these, okay? So generally, whenever I tighten it, I'll just go to the edge and I stop because if I overdo it, you I lose the focus right away. So I just wanted to make sure I just do a little bit and if everything is good, I'm fine. If not, I'll make minor correction using the plus 10, minus 10 and I get, uh, I get by with the focus. It's not as good as refractors, but it will actually, uh, it doesn't lose focus. That's the main advantage that you are going to get into. But keep in mind, when you start your imaging session and if your camera is not cool yet, I would focus it right after the camera cooled again because for some reason I'm noticing that the moment you cool the camera, your focus is going to change. Okay, that's one thing I learned 
The next thing was uh, during the meridian flips, even though sometimes I have this locked, or maybe I haven't, I haven't locked it completely, maybe a tiny bit. When you do a meridian flip and when you go from one side to the other side, you do lose focus. So do refocusing after meridian flip. Don't make the automatic focuser turn on every 30 minutes. It's not going to help you. So you have to like, you know, babysit uh, the focusing session because whatever that it is doing is not perfect automatically. So you have to make sure do it a couple of times yourself and then you, because you don't need to do it every 30 minutes so it's not painful at all let's talk about the flats okay so when it comes to flats i tried like middle of the histogram for the flats that didn't really work for me so i have to reduce the adu on the flat to like 10k and that didn't work then i reduced to 8k didn't work so sometimes I get lucky with 5k and sometimes I get lucky with 1k meaning 1000 or 5000 ADU. Either one of those two are working uh, from a flat standpoint, how bright the flats can be. Uh, but one thing that I notice though is if you are taking an image and when you watch the uh, ADU for your image itself, let's say your signal is pretty good and you got like a 1000 or 1200 ADU on your uh, picture. Uh, if you look at the sequence generator pro, it, it is right on the top. Okay. When you look at the image statistics and that ADU, if it is 1200, your flat has to be plus or minus 10 of that one and it will work very well. So my flat can be like a thousand or 1300 or 1400. I get by that. Uh, if it is not, I use my 1K flats and I use my 5K flats. That's the reason why I keep the mirror clean because I don't want to depend on like the flats for me reduce only the vignetting, not the dust. Generally, I keep the mirror clean so that I don't want to depend too much on the flats though. A lot of people ask me about how do I take flats with Rasa. So I put a t-shirt on this embroidery ring. I think you can get it from a craft store and you can uh, put it on top of your dew shield and you can take flax. I think this is the easiest way and you can remove it when you are done rather than like trying to tie this t-shirt on top of the dew shield. Uh, do I use darks? Do I use bias frames? For me, I think darks and bias frames does work but I can take like 50 dark frames I have to like take lesser dark frames like maybe 10 or 8 dark frames that's good enough but if I take all 50 dark frames I get into a lot of trouble do I take bias frames I do I take almost like a hundred bias frames and I stack it and keep it ready from a bias frame so in my calibration I do have flats bias and darks but I only take 20 flats, 20 darks and uh, 100 bias frames. With that, I think it will work very, very well. So do I like Rasa? Uh, without, absolutely, without Rasa, probably I would not be able to image like many nights because the time I come home and I pull the Rasa out and I put it back in is like few hours. And during that time, if I don't have any clouds or whatever, so my imaging session is pretty small. So without Rasa, probably I would not have done any pictures at all. So Rasa does help uh, because of the speed. It's not as stable uh, from an imaging standpoint like as a refractor. So if you are so used to the refractor and if you trust the autofocus on the refractor and if you leave the refractor all night without you looking at it, if you are used to that kind of a comfort, I think Rasa is going to surprise you and gives you a lot of trouble. So for Rasa, you have to babysit generally and it does take very good pictures. So you have to kind of set the expectations right for Rasa. I don't have the same expectations like a refractor. Okay. So, but if you take five hours of uh, Rasa picture and five hours of refractor picture, you actually get a pretty good picture on the Rasa more signal because uh, of f2 how do i like monochrome on this one 
I think monochrome is like really good for rasa. You need F2 filters though, like border F2 filters, or use astronomic like 12 nanometers. It doesn't matter which brand. Use anything that is more than 10 nanometers. I think that works really well. I'm using astronomic 12 nanometer filters. With this one, I can get by pretty easily. Am I using color camera? I love using color camera on this one. I never use the Celestron light pollution filter. I have two light pollution filters that I really liked. One of them is the IDAS LPS2. Pretty good filter for the light pollution control. If I have that one, I just put that in my put that in my Starzona filter slider and I use the color camera and I have nothing. I mean, that's pretty much my imaging session for that night. If the other filter I use is the Barter UHS filter, it's really good. Compared to these two, I'm loving the UHS filter now because I just started it. I don't know what are all the issues with it, but the UHS filter cuts the moonlight also, which is amazing. Even on the moonlight, it cuts it pretty good. It cuts the light pollution really good, particularly on my south side. I'm looking at the Dallas Metro and I have a lot of light pollution. So I cut that one off pretty good. Um, actually, my signal is very less when I put the border UHS filter. So I have to change my camera setting from the HDR, the highest dynamic range setting, to Unity gain when I'm using the UHS filter. Otherwise, I just leave it on the HDR. The only time I change from HDR to Unity gain, anytime whether monochrome or color, is when my ADU is like less than 500. For some reason, if it, the, if, if the signal is very low and you have to take like maybe 30 second exposure or 60 second, maybe it's too windy and you just wanted to stay with 30 second exposures, then if the ADU is like below 500, I bump up my unity gain. So keep in mind though, you have to take flats for with that setup, like you know, whatever the unity gain, you can't use the HDR flats on the unity gain, obviously. But the darks and vast frames, you can easily get by it. That should not be a problem at all. If your flats are giving you more trouble, just don't calibrate with flats. Uh, as long as you keep the mirror clean, you can get by it. I mean, maybe you have to crop it, like removing the edges off, but I sometimes actually remove the flats if I don't have, if, if some for some reason if the flats are not working. Uh, do I use PHD2 with this one? Very often, even I use with the 50 mm guide scope, with CGX mount. I would prefer CGXL though. I told you that this is this mount is barely making it, but I can easily get by. I can get like two minutes, three minutes exposures with this one, but I never need to go like more than two minutes or more than three minutes with Rasa anyway. But you can easily, you can get a pretty good round stars. You may not get a with CGX mount and with Rasa being heavy and with 50 mm guide scope being so small, you may not get below one RMS error. You might get like 1.5, 1.7, but your stars is going to be pretty round because of the focal length and because of the guide scope being small, uh, you should easily get by it. So that is my review. I want to catch up with everyone who is on RASA 8 journey or RASA 11 journey. Please do share your comments and let me know what your experiences are. I'm all ears. I would love to hear from you guys what you all think. So with Rasa, I recently took a picture of the cocoon. It came out extremely well. Actually, I tried cocoon with my refractor, my refractor and the color camera versus my Rasa and the color camera. The cocoon nebula came very good on Rasa. When I try to take a picture of horse head with the color UHS filter on Rasa, I couldn't get it. The signal is not enough. So I have to maybe remove UHS filter and put a IR UV, I guess. But I will show you guys my refractor picture with horse head nebula. Came out really well. I actually went up to like uh, five minute exposures and 10 minute exposures with CG XL mount and the Explore Scientific 127. That picture came out well. B between these two telescopes, I do like both of them. Uh, they are for different 
reasons you can if you combine a picture with both i think it's going to be perfect it depends on your situation and what you wanted to use thanks for watching clear skies guys